of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And of course, his lovely wife Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Dom DeFore. I think you're going on an awful lot of trouble just for a school dance. Well, this isn't an ordinary dance. This is a real special deal. Big man, very social. Now, how's that look? Very good. If you ask me, I think you ought to stay home and send Sylvester to the dance. Sylvester? Who's Sylvester? Oh, haven't you met Sylvester yet, Mom? May I present my mother? This is Sylvester Coat Hanger, Mother. Oh, how do you do? My, he has a very limp handshake. <laughs> He's also got on David's good pants. That's so I see. Is that what you're going to wear to the dance, David? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to wear this coat here, too. I hope this outfit looks as good on David as it does on Sylvester here. Yes, yes, you said that before, little man. Who are you taking to the dance, David? A new girl in town, Mom. Oh? What's she like? I don't know. I've never taken her out before. Oh? Sort of a blind date? Oh, well, not exactly. I've seen her before. She just hasn't seen David. <laughs> you know. I take it she's pretty special. Yeah, she is. I'm lucky to be taking her out. That's the smartest thing you've said all morning. Thanks, my girl. Well, she sounds like a very attractive girl. How did you happen to meet her? Oh, she has a couple of classes with me, and I've been helping her in algebra. You helped her? Yeah, what's wrong with that? What a dope she must be. You're just about passing yourself. <laughs> Ricky, why don't you get lost? You think I need a haircut, Mom? No, I think it looks very nice, David. Who's doing your waves this season, dearie? <laughs> Ricky, get lost, will you? You know, now that you mention it, David, I think maybe you could stand a trim in the back. Well, as long as it's not absolutely necessary. I like to save the money if I could. Whoops! Looks if I came in at the wrong time. <laughs> yes, sir. Just mention money and Pop's right on the spot. Oh, you're not whistling Dixie. Poor old Pop's always on the spot when it comes to money. Oh, well, you're so right. It seems the boys could use an advance on their allowance, and I need a couple of dollars for the paper boy and the bread Whoa, man. Oh, oh, don't go any further. I'll settle for as far as you've gone now. <laughs> man of action. I'll drink to that. <laughs> See, it looks as if your mother's first. She has seniority. What does that mean, Pop? Means mom's a little older than you. Never mind. Means I'm a little bigger than you are. Oh, you'll have to wait, Harriet. I have nothing smaller than a five. And I know oh, you I'll only take want that. I love that. Oh, afraid we're in trouble here. I only have a $10 bill left. I'd like to have that same trouble, boy. I think I can change for you, Pop. Really, Dave? Yeah, a $10 bill it is. There you are, Pop. Ten dollars. Wow. Well, you got a lot of money stashed away there, son. Yeah, I've been saving up. Well, here's a couple of dollars for you, Rick. Thanks, Pop. A couple of dollars for you, Dave. Thanks, Pop. This will come in nice and handy. Well, now, look, you guys. Don't you spend that foolishly all in one place. Heck no. I'm going to spend mine foolishly in a lot of places. <laughs> you know, it's quite a bundle David has stashed away there, isn't it? Well, I'm not surprised. Well, what do you mean? Well, he's been taking his lunch to school almost every day for a week now. Oh? And not only that, he never rides the bus anymore. He either walks or he rides with one of his friends. Oh, you must be saving up for some special occasion. Yes, didn't he say something about going to a school dance tonight? Yes, but the tickets are already paid for. I think you may be on the right track, though. Uh, in what way? Well, it seems he's taking some new little girl at school. And evidently, she's pretty hot stuff because David's been helping her with her algebra. And that's just not like David. Well, he's probably saving up his money just to make a big impression on this girl at the dance. Uh, who is this little girl, Harry? Do you know her? Well, no, but I'm sure she's very nice if David likes her. Oh, yes, of course. It's just that David is so naive. I'd hate to have him get in the clutches of some little gold digger. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a mercenary female. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you say that, dear. Well, what do you mean? Well, I was just thinking that $5 you gave me isn't going to go very far, and I thought perhaps you could let me have a couple more. I surrender, dear. <laughs> Thorny. 
Hi. I think this notebook belongs to David. Oh, yeah, that looks like his. Thanks a lot. He left the road at our place last night. He and Will were collaborating a little homework. Oh, I'm glad to know the boys are showing that much interest in their studies these days. Well, I offered Will a little bonus to bring his marks up. You know how kids are this age. They're always a little short of funds. Well, maybe Will is, but by golly, David is loaded. Yeah? Yeah, I wanted to change at 10 this morning, and he had to change for just like that. <laughs> no kidding. Where does he get it all? Well, evidently, he hasn't spent any money for about six months. He has money stashed all over his room. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> I suppose he's going to the dance over at school tomorrow night. Uh, yeah. He's going to take some new little girl just to arrive in town. Oh. <laughs> I know just what you're thinking, Thorny, and it's not true. What do you mean? Well, I can tell by the expression on your face that you think this little girl is some sort of a gold digger, and that Dave has just been saving up his money so he could squander it at the dance and make a big impression on this girl. <laughs> no, I wasn't, Oz. But now that you mention it, it's just possible that he is saving up to buy our nice Valentine's Day gift. Valentine's? Is today Valentine's Day? Well, no, but tomorrow is. Oh, gee, I'm glad you mentioned that, Thorny. As a matter of fact, I'm just on my way downtown to buy Captain a box of candy. I'll tell you what, Oz. Give me five dollars and I'll buy you a box so you can give to Harriet. Oh, no, no, Thorne. Well, sure, Oz, it'll save you a trip down there. Well, well, uh, it's a very nice thought, but after all, Valentine's Day is a very romantic occasion. And half the sentiment of it is the idea of taking the trouble and the pleasure of going down there and picking out the appropriate present for the one you're so fond of. Okay, Oz, you made the speech. Now, what kind do you want me to get for Harriet? One of those heart-shaped boxes with I love you on it? <laughs> oh, Harriet. Harriet, have you seen the boys? Yes, I think they're both upstairs. Oh, I have David's notebook. Will Thornberry had it. Oh, well, I'm glad Will found it. David's been looking for it. Oh. Hey. Hey, how about this? Oh, do you think you should be looking through David's notebook? Well, I, I wasn't exactly looking through it, but this page kind of fell open when I was looking through it. Uh, <laughs> well, after all, I'm the boy's father. Yes, dear, I know. <laughs> well, it's a list. Perfume, candy, scarf, compact. Well, it sounds like Ricky's spelling list. Sounds to me more like David's sucker list. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious, Harriet, that David's about to squander all his money on this little girl that we don't even know. Well, after all, it is his money, and I'm sure the little girl is very nice. After all, I'm sure David's smart enough to... to... Well, I mean, if he's anything like his old dad, which I'm sure he is. Yes, I know. Poor David. Poor David. You mean your shorts? Don't get personal about this. Well, if I had to wear these things, I wouldn't want to mention it either. How much money do we have? I don't know. I have to count it first. I'll help you. You count the pennies. Okay. One, Five, ten. Four. <laughs> Ricky, stop counting out loud. You're getting this book mixed up. Let's not count this small change. Let's count this folding stuff. I'll stuff later. Just leave it on the bed, David. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Sure I trust you. But just leave it on the bed. I don't know what you're so suspicious about. Half this stuff is mine anyhow. In fact, I think it's all mine. It is not. One of these dollars is mine. That one right there. How do you know? Because it has my name on it. Oh, fine. I suppose you crossed out Washington and wrote in Nelson. <laughs> Look, David, it took me a long time to save up this dollar, and I want everybody to know that it belongs to me. 
<laughs> we sure have saved up quite a bit, haven't we? Yeah. We ought to be able to buy Mom a neat Valentine's present with this. How about a nice box of candy? Oh, yeah, the chocolate ones with the fruit centers. Does she like those? I don't know, but I sure do. Listen, Ricky, we're buying this present for Mom. Do you think she'd like a nice bottle of perfume? Don't be a dope, David. You can't eat perfume. Listen, Ricky, we're buying something Mom likes, not something you like. Okay, okay. What are we gonna get Dad? I was just wondering about that. I wonder if you're supposed to buy your father a Valentine's Day present. Well, sure, why not? Oh, I don't know. Valentine's Day is sort of a sweetheart's day. You know, love stuff. Well, don't you like Pop? Oh, sure I like him. I just don't want to embarrass him, that's all. Well, we're gonna get Mom something, aren't we? Well, that's different. Mom's your mother. Boy's best friend is his mother. I thought a boy's best friend was his dog. Oh, <laughs> you know, the more I think of it, I think we ought to give Pop a present. What do you think he needs? Well, they could always use a big box of chocolates with the fruit centers. Oh, Ricky, don't be silly. He's got something sensible. Well, what about a belt? Oh, he's got a belt. How about a pair of socks? No, he's got a pair of socks, too. <laughs> well, we'll figure out what to get him later on. How much are we going to spend on Pop's present? I don't know, whatever it costs. We want to get him something nice. How much is that? I don't know. Seems to me that's the most important item. Look, Ricky, when you give a present to somebody you like, you don't worry about how much it costs. Okay, if you say so. I guess I better leave the room now. I don't want to embarrass you. What's this? I know you have one more gift to figure out, sweetheart. Ozzy. Oh, yeah, all right. Say, you know, you may be right after all about this little discussion we had a while ago. Uh, what discussion is that? Well, about David and his little girlfriend that he seems to be so taken with. I was just passing the boys' room just now, and I overheard them talking. Now, I wasn't eavesdropping or anything. No, 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 of course. Uh, what did you hear them say? Well, I heard David tell Ricky that when you really like somebody, it doesn't make any difference how much money you spend on their present. And he had an awful lot of money there. Maybe I ought to have a little talk with him, huh? Personally, I think he just ought to buy her a nice corsage. Say, I have a thought. Maybe Ricky could mention the corsage idea to him. Ricky? Yes, the boys seem to talk over most of those things, and you could tell Rick how you feel, and he could act as sort of a go-between. Yeah, that might be a pretty good idea at that. Did you want me, Pop? Oh, hi, Rick. Uh, yeah, uh, sit down for a second, son. Uh, where's David? He's outside playing basketball. Do you want to see him? No, no, uh, but what I have to tell you concerns David. Oh, is something wrong, Pop? No, not especially. Let's see how I can put this. Well, every once in a while, there's something that you want to tell somebody, but it's of a rather delicate nature. So rather than to risk hurting the person's feelings, you tell it to a third person and have him relay the information. Do you follow what I mean? Oh, sure, Pa. Like the time I got that bad report card and I asked Iggy Schwartz to tell you. Yes. <laughs> That's uh, sort of the same idea. Well, first of all, I happen to know that David has been saving up a great deal of money lately. He sure has. And also, I happen to know that he has in mind buying a rather expensive gift for somebody with part of that money. Gee, that was supposed to be a secret, Pa. Well, I just happened to find out about it, and I thought I'd tell you what I think he ought to buy, and then you can pass the information on to David. Sure, that's well. He'd like to know. Well, to begin with, I'm against spending too much money. See, it's much better to buy an inexpensive but appropriate gift, something that really expresses the sentiment of Valentine's Day. Like what, Pop? Well, I had in mind uh, a nice corsage. What's a corsage? A corsage is a, a bunch of flowers that you pin to your shoulder, you wear across your shoulder. Yeah, it sounds kind of sissy to me. Oh, no, no, not at all. After all, Valentine's Day is a very sentimental occasion, and there's nothing expresses sentiment better than flowers. You mean you really want him to buy a corsage? Yes, I do. I don't think you could buy anything that would be more appropriate. Okay, if you say so, Pa. I thought it'd be better if I stay out of this, you see, and you tell David about it. Oh, sure, Pop. He'll be happy to know what you want him to buy. 
but I don't think he'll believe it. Well, just tell him what I said. Okay, Pa. I'll tell him. Attaboy. You sure you want him to buy a corsage? Yes, I, I'm positive. Pa? Yes? Did you really play football in college? <laughs> I got him in the hall closet. Why can't we give him to Mom and Pop now? Because Valentine's Day isn't until tomorrow. Oh, come on, David. I can't wait that long. I told you. We'll give him to him tomorrow. Hi, boy. Oh, hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. Well, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing at all. Looks like a little excitement around here, huh? Well, the boys seem to have something mysterious going on. Oh, secrets, eh? Yeah, we're hiding your presents. <laughs> oh, Ricky. Uh, the, the, wait a minute. Uh, what's this about presents? Yeah, David, what's this about presents? Never mind trying to cover up now, Blabbermouth. Well, we might as well show you. Come on into the den. Yeah, we might as well show you. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I'll say it is. Yeah, this is for you, Mom. Oh, happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's a little ahead of time, but I'm always happy to receive a gift from my two boyfriends. Well, come on, open it up. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's a box of my favorite chocolates with the fruit centers. Yeah, I'm glad you like them too, Mom. If you need any help eating those, Mom, you sure don't have to look any farther. <laughs> and this is for you, Pop. For me? Well, boys, you shouldn't have done it. I don't think we should have either, but that's what Ricky said you wanted, Pop. I hope it's all right. Well, this certainly is a surprise. I had no idea you fellas were going to give me a... What's this? It's a croissant, Pop. That's what Ricky said you wanted. Try it on, Pop. See how it looks. <laughs> You did want a croissant, didn't you, Pop? Sounded awful funny to me, but that's what Ricky said. Oh, well, you see, when Ricky spoke to me about buying a, a Valentine's present, I thought he meant... Well, I mean, you see, uh, David was saving up all that money. Well, boys, I think there's been a slight misunderstanding. Uh, no, no, just a second, Harriet. Uh, what makes you think so? Well, hasn't there been? Oh, uh, I'm uh, not so sure. Now, now let's uh, think this over for a minute. Do you mean you wanted a corsage for Valentine's Day? Uh, well, uh, yes, I mean, <laughs> well, that is... Oh, oh, now I get it. I'll see how clever of you. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank you, dear. Uh... Uh, how was it clever of me? I, I mean, uh, you tell the boys. Well, you see, boys, your father may believe that he wanted a corsage for himself, when actually he wanted to give it to me. Oh, uh, yes, yes, you, you see, uh, Valentine's Day is a very sentimental occasion. And I kind of had a little hunch that you boys were going to get a present for me. <laughs> they are clever, dear. Yeah, we didn't even know we were getting them one a little while ago. But you see, actually, this is a gift from your three boyfriends together. Well, you certainly fooled me. Uh, well, I have my moments. Then you weren't really worried about the little girl at all. What little girl, Mom? The little girl you're taking to the dance tomorrow night. You mean Marilyn? What's she got to do with it? Oh, uh, well, your mother kind of got the idea that you've been saving up all your money to buy this little girl an expensive present. Gee, <laughs> what for? Well, you're taking her to the dance tomorrow night, and it would be nice if you gave her something for Valentine's Day. Golly, that's right. Look, I have an idea. Since you gave me the corsage, why don't you give her the candy? What's this? <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, hi, Ernie. What's the present? Ernie? Oh, it's just a little something Oz had me pick out for him. Now, don't be so nosy, Harriet. Just a little St. Valentine's Day surprise. Oh, uh, I'll take it, Thorny. Thank you. What is it, Pop? Oh, just a box of candy, David. I love you. <laughs> Look at the corsage Oz you gave me for Valentine's Day, Thorny. Well, ah, uh, hush. I bought the box of candy. <laughs> Thorny, I was going to wait until tomorrow, but... Oh, gosh, you wouldn't be a surprise now anyway. So here, happy Valentine's Day to you, Thorny. <laughs> you mean this is for me? Well, sure. What'd you think it was for? <laughs> gosh, I thought it was for Harriet. Oh, uh, I've been fooling everybody today. <laughs> That's what I meant you to think. <laughs> uh, gee, Oz, I didn't think you cared. 
Uh, well, you know me, Thorny. I'm kind of a sentimental guy at heart. Oh, gosh, Oz. This is a great big surprise. Uh, and look, I know you didn't get anything from me, but don't worry. It's perfectly okay. I understand. No, no, you're wrong, Oz. I do have a present for you. Here, hold this. Really? Actually, I was going to wait until tomorrow, but since you've given me mine, I may as well uh, give you yours. <laughs> there you are, Oz. Happy Valentine's Day to you, too. Oh, honey, you shouldn't have done it. Oh, oh, a beautiful tie. How about this? Oh, Thorny, I can't accept this. No, 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 please do, Oz. This was a Christmas present for my mother-in-law. <laughs> Finally, I'll try it on. All right. You know, this is the first time Mr. Thornbury and Pop have given each other Valentine's presents. Well, this is the first time your father ever had you boys buy him a Valentine to give to me. <laughs> this is the first time I ever bought a Valentine to give to myself from somebody else. <laughs> Valentine's Day sure is a confusing holiday, boy. <laughs> Hello, dear. Hi, Mom. Well, how was the dance? Oh, swell. Boy, that box of candy sure made a big hit with Marilyn. What's this? Well, don't you remember? You suggested I give her the box of candy for a Valentine's present. Oh, yes. Well, I'm glad she liked it. She sure is a nice girl. Very considerate and very diplomatic. In what way, dear? Well, she didn't even say a word about the whole top layer being missing. <laughs> 